For those of you guys that have been watching me for a little while, you guys know that I'm a basketball fan. I played it as a kid uh, and I still watch the NBA. I follow it all the time. I watch as many highlights as I can. Um, I keep uh, kind of in the game uh, with the latest moves, teams and whatnot. So I'm always kind of all over the NBA. And one of the things that I've always enjoyed about basketball is athleticism. You know, this is one of the things that we all get attracted to. Uh, to about the NBA. It's it's very unique. You know, there's European basketball that I like watching as well, although I don't watch it near as often enough as I watch uh, the NBA. And one of the things is, is that the players in the NBA are just way more athletic. Um, the players in the NBA are also much more skilled and, and is just a higher level of, of standard when it comes to the NBA basketball. Uh, Athleticism is one of those things that it's it's amazing to see. You know, the, for for somebody like me that's played basketball, I understand and I have an intuition of what it is, how high the freaking ring is, um, and what it is to, you know, beat your man and drive into the paint and then lay it up or, or float it over somebody that's taller than you. I understand, the kind of, I have a feeling of what 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 it is that we're dealing with. Uh, so somebody that hasn't played the game of basketball might not appreciate somebody jumping up um, and throwing the ball down. Um, so every time I see somebody do incredible, uh, you know, some, some incredible feat in terms of athleticism, a dunk or an alley-oop or something like that, I always get amazed, not just about the skill of playing that sport, but just the sheer raw athleticism that some of these guys have. It's absolutely phenomenal. And now that I'm in my 30s and basketball's low, you know, way, way behind me in terms of playing it, and now that I love the barbell sports and strength training, I still have a lot of enjoyment looking at athleticism because what I'm trying to do with my 300 kilo squat, 300 kilo deadlift and 180 bench press is to a degree athleticism. It's not athletics as such. I'm not running, jumping, uh, but it's you know some of these exercises that I'm kind of about are used to develop this athleticism. And so it's, it's, it's fun. It's fun to me. I've never been able to dunk. Um, I've never been a leaper. I've always kind of been a six foot guy when I play basketball um, that could you know really run. I can run. I can beat my man the first four or five steps. I'm really explosive. So I was kind of that guy that's kind of quick on his feet, but I never had the vert- vertical leaping ability. In recent times, uh, I don't know how long for, but definitely reignited in my mind when I was watching the NBA dunk contest, which is probably the worst freaking dunk contest that I've ever seen in my life. Uh, just appalling. Um, and one of the one of the really cool uh, ideas that uh, Stephen A. Smith on ESPN came up with was this idea of the next dunk contest being a kind of like a national uh, call out. So you would have, every state would have some sort of leading up competitions where every kind of normal guy can kind of enter these local contests and then the 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 whatever 12 guys or six guys or whatever the 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 final top dunkers uh rock up to the nba dunk contest next year and then you can see what athleticism is because right now it's really weird because the nba superstars are not taking part in in these dunk contests it's all these kind of rookie guys who are coming through we don't really know them much uh and basically the pressure on them is immense coupled with the fact that basically all the dunks have already been done you know, ever since Aaron Gordon and Zach Levine. That's probably one of the best dunk contests. Since then, it's been not good. Uh, but anyway, all of this in my mind, I've kind of been thinking about dunking. Could I ever dunk? I've certainly seen guys who are, you know, big, big squatters and big people at that. You know, we're talking... I remember Mark Henry. I don't know whether you guys... Remember who Mark, Mark Henry is? So he's a, a, a wrestler, a WWF or WWE wrestler. I watched it as a kid. I remember one of the stories hearing about him is that he can dunk a basketball. Now, I don't know how big this guy is. He's probably like 6'5 or 6'4, something like that. He's not a seven footer by any means, uh, but he could dunk the ball. And he's a big, fat dude, right? But he's a power athlete, like a strong man, a tough guy. And so I, I think you can develop really good leaping ability if you if you train the squat and the deadlift. Um, now, all of this has kind of been in my mind for you know, in recent times because, you know, can you, can I uh, somehow change my training in a sense where I can develop 
some sort of vertical ability. What will it take for me to be able to dunk? So I've got a 210 kilo squat. Now, I think that's enough strength. Now I need to develop explosiveness. And how does one develop explosiveness? You know, there's definitely plyometrics. You can do all sorts of box jumps. And, you know, I follow a few pages on Instagram to talk about this. I, I certainly remember when I was playing basketball, there was this program called Air Alert. I don't know whether you guys know about this program. It was basically a whole bunch of strength exercises, exercises in general that will get you to increase your vertical lead by like whatever, 10 inches or five inches or whatever the case might be. So I remember doing that and a lot of that stuff was calf raises, uh, step ups to a chair, you know, jumps, uh, quick jumps. Like there's a whole bunch of things that I remember from that period of my life kind of concerning myself with explosiveness. Right now, uh, one of the concerns I have with doing plyometrics is basically my joints. I don't think my joints are used to, uh, you know, jumping, running, turning, you know, uh, uh, angles, uh, change of direction. That's kind of, a, I, would, I wouldn't want to just jump straight into something like that, full ball. But one thing that we can all do, basically from the next session that we do, is just basically use the weights that we're using right now and move them explosively. So in this workout, uh, I tried to uh, lift 180, uh, sets of 180 for five, explosively. I don't know whether you guys can see that, but I was trying to put all my mind into the bar, and you can see the bar would kind of bounce on the top uh, at the end of the, each rep because uh, I was really trying to kind of like accelerate that bar. Kind of reminds me of how kettlebell training goes. You know, the weight is 15, 20 kilos in your hand, and it's not very heavy. We can definitely, all of us can lift a lot more. But the fact that you are trying to accelerate this weight, the fact that you're trying to throw this weight adds the difficulty of the exercise. So just like a kettlebell, you can accelerate the barbell. Um, I know Louis Simmons and the Westside Barbell Boys, they talk about dynamic effort and how important that is for a strength athlete where you take, well, I think they use 70% of the one rep max and they do a whole stack of singles where they're basically looking for explosion. They use chains, they use bands, and this is all kind of like, I think they call it accommodating resistance, where the resistance is increasing as you are going through the repetition. So you are trying to like throw this bar, throw the, 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 the foot, foot, like too much force into the bar. So say you are lifting 180 kilos for a set of one. You know the amount of force you need to exert on 180, okay? But what if I asked you to exert 210 kilos into that 180? What does that look like? Well, clearly you are overexerting yourself for the given resistance. That will result into acceleration and basically this excess force left over, which will basically mean the bar will leave your shoulders in a squat or a deadlift or something like that, where you're kind of like throwing it. This, this idea of throwing is like, like a baseball or a, or a basketball is you are putting more force into that object than it requires for you to lift it. And then the net effect is that it starts to fly, it flies off, right, off your hand. So as I was kind of doing these uh, sets, you know, first set, second set, I was getting absolutely hammered. Like it was taking a lot, like a lot of out of me, right? Like as I was going into the training session, I'm like, oh, I'm good for five by five. I felt refreshed. I felt uh, energetic. You know, I even thought, I had thoughts in my mind of doing 190 today. Uh, but, you know, I started off with the barbell, went to 60, went to 100, and I was literally trying to accelerate the bar. By the time I even got to 180, I was like, oh, man, I, like, I almost feel like I'm already kind of half spent. Explosiveness is a different ball game. Uh, I'm just talking about from an aspect of, uh, you know, muscles right now, you know, teaching the muscle how to be explosive. But obviously, we know when it comes to basketball, football, whatever you want to call it, there's a lot more elements that come into this. Uh, you know, with, I think yesterday or the day before, I talked about ligaments, uh, tendons. There's a lot of different things going on in terms of explosiveness. It's, you know, it's just muscle mass and, and strength of that particular muscle. Uh, so these are the type of, type of things that are kind of like revolving in my head right now. I'm a 33-year-old guy right now. It's probably not the greatest idea for me to kind of get into explosive training. Uh, I'm very, very hesitant to even think about it. Uh, but today I opted out to just move the bar really quickly. Uh, in all of this, uh, I kept thinking about some of the old readings that I used to do back in the day, before the barbell. And I remember reading a piece uh, back then that talked about what produces leaping ability, which muscles. 
And it was something like 70%, if I recall correctly, of your leaping ability comes from your glutes. It's that hip extension. Obviously, you need a whole bunch of other things, but it's something like predominant. Uh, I, I might be wrong with this, and I apologize for that. It's been kind of a long time since I kind of last read material about this topic. But I, I remember clearly it was predominantly a glute expression, so hip extension, which is why you're seeing me doing this exercise. Uh, not the only reason. Uh, I was kind of walking past it in between one of these sets, and I saw this machine, and I saw it. Before my kind of gym hiatus, commercial gym hiatus, I remember doing this exercise and it was absolutely humbling how difficult this thing was, how much it taxed me. And once again, I am absolutely shocked how weak I am in this damn movement. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just the novelty of the exercise, like you guys said to me a few months ago when I did, last did it. Man, is it the machine? Is it the comfort level? Is it, is it the fact that there's no bar hurting me? And I can literally posteriorly uh, tilt my pelvis at the top. That's kind of what I was trying. Even though it doesn't look like I'm fully extending my hips, I'm, I'm trying to kind of tilt my hips. Uh, anyway, it, it, it gassed me. I walked out of the gym. I can't remember the last time I, I kind of like almost limped out of the gym. Like my glutes right now as I'm sitting here telling you about this, uh, this session, I'm spent. I'm spent. Uh, uh, the, the reason why I think these horizontal hip thrusts make sense is that on top of a squat, right? So when you're standing there with the bar, there's not a lot of resistance going through the glute, okay? Because if you think about the, the, the angle or, or, or the direction of gravity, it goes straight down, right? And so when you're standing there with the barbell, the force is basically all your joints are locked out. But if you take that side profile look of your body with the barbell and you kind of Take a picture of that and then flick it on its back. And now you're kind of horizontal. And you take that barbell from your shoulders and put it on your hips. Uh, all of a sudden, that end position, that locked out position of the hips is the peak challenge. That's where the peak force is required for you to lock that thing out. So it changes the strength curve of the, of the base of the hip thrust or the hip uh, difficulty of locking out. So I think this is where these hip thrusts make sense, glute bridges and things like this uh, for athleticism. Because like I said, you want that excess athleticism. You want the excess force at the end of the range of motion. So that, that pop of the hip at the end is what propels you forward. Uh, just interesting. It's just interesting to uh, kind of side quest my journey uh, I am not saying that I'm going to go full, full mental for, for jump training, dunk training, but it's kind of, it, it's challenging me in, in, in a different sense. Uh, by far, still the primary goal for me is the squat. You know, I want to get to 195 by 5, 205 by 5. That's really kind of hot on my mind. Uh, but part of that thinking is also explosiveness. And I know guys who have solely been concerned about squatting have used these types of ideas, dynamic effort in the west side, west side barbell, dynamic effort. So it has a place to move weight quickly. Uh, it's just interesting. It's not just about the sheer weight on the bar. It's about the force you're applying into the bar. Okay, so you can use 180 on the bar as your resistance, but you could be putting, I don't know, 250 kilos of pressure into the bar. Okay, so if you were... Lifting 250 for one, there will be equivalent amount of force for you to lift that thing. So it's kind of an, an, a way of not playing down to your opponent. That's a term that I remember as a basketball player, the coach used to tell us we were playing like a lower ranked team and we just kind of play to that level because, you know, that's kind of the standard we're dealing with. No, really good teams have to smash crappy teams. Don't lower the standard to their level. Play to your highest level. That's kind of what explosive training is. It's giving absolute force into even a suboptimal weight. Now, I have to say uh, that this is very, very taxing stuff. Basically, what we're asking here is to, for you to do maximum exertion into a sub-maximal weight. That's basically one rep maxing it in a way. So I think this is a very hard, very high recovery cost because we are trying to throw this weight around. And that is very, very taxing.
That's like doing a one rep max with a weight that is not a one rep max, that kind of thing. Uh, but ultimately, I think uh, it is still easier than to do a one rep max because the, the, the speed of the bar is, is much, much greater. Uh, anyway, lots of these ideas are in my head right now. Uh, I'll continue to think about all of this. Maybe I'll introduce some dynamic effort stuff. Maybe not. Um, this is kind of like, uh, how should I say it? A thought process in, in the working. I uh, want to thank everybody on the Patreon list. There's no new names uh, today. Everyone that you kind of saw in the, in the four pages, I want to thank everybody. I want to thank everybody that it's not even on this page and on the on the YouTube uh, comment section supporting me, giving me well wishes, congratulating me for 100K. Uh, absolutely, thank you guys for all of that. Um, appreciate you guys. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.